The Bible is a rich and complex text filled with various passages that at times may seem to present conflicting ideas. One such instance that has puzzled theologians and scholars is the apparent contradiction between Jesus' statement in John 3.13, No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, and the Old Testament account of Elijah's dramatic ascent in 2 Kings 2.11. This sermon delves into this intriguing topic, exploring the different meanings of heaven in the Bible, the concept of paradise, and potential interpretations that reconcile these seemingly contradictory passages. To understand the potential harmony between Jesus' statement and the Old Testament account, it is essential to recognize the diverse ways the term heaven is used throughout the Bible. The word heaven, Hebrew shamayim, Greek uranos, is employed to denote three distinct realms. One, the atmospheric heavens. In many biblical instances, heaven refers to the skies, where birds soar, clouds gather, and airplanes fly. Genesis 1.20, Jeremiah 4.25, Matthew 6.26. Two, the sidereal heavens. This usage pertains to the firmament that houses celestial bodies such as the sun, moon, and stars, the outer space. Genesis 1, 14 to 15, Psalm 19, 4, 6, Isaiah 13, 10. Three, the spiritual heaven. This is the divine realm where God resides. Psalm 2, 4, Hebrews 9 to 24. It is the eternal dwelling place of the faithful. Revelation 21, 18 to 23, John 14, 1 to 3, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 to 3. The story of Elijah's ascent in 2 Kings 2, 11 has been a focal point of debate regarding the nature of heaven to which he ascended. Some argue that this account contradicts Jesus' statement in John 3, 13. However, it is important to note that the biblical text does not explicitly specify the exact nature of the heaven to which Elijah ascended. The text allows for alternative interpretations, suggesting that Elijah's ascent might have been a miraculous event, taking him high into the air, but not necessarily into the immediate presence of God. The Bible offers insights into the state of the departed spirits of the righteous. They are said to reside in a place known as Paradise or the Bosom of Abraham, Luke 16, 19-31. When Jesus assured the penitent thief on the cross that he would be with him in paradise, Luke 23, 43, it is unlikely that he meant they would immediately be in the presence of God the Father. This is reaffirmed when, after his resurrection, Jesus told Mary in John 20, 17 that he had not yet ascended to the Father. This suggests that Christ's spirit went to Hades, which is the realm of departed spirits. Thus, a faithful servant does not immediately enter God's presence upon death but goes to paradise, the same place where Abraham's spirit went after his passing. For the sake of argument, even if one assumes that Elijah's spirit did enter God's immediate presence, Jesus' statement in John 3.13 could still be considered accurate. He might have meant that no one had ascended to heaven by their own act or on their terms. Both Elijah and Enoch were taken by God, which is different from ascending to heaven independently. Moreover, Jesus might have been emphasizing that no one on earth at the time had ascended to heaven and returned to share first-hand knowledge of what they had witnessed. His statement was not about whether people can enter heaven, but rather that no one had gone to heaven, returned, and conveyed the same spiritual truths he was teaching. The skepticism that Jesus either lied or was mistaken when he stated, No one has ascended to heaven, in John 3.13 does not withstand scrutiny. The word heaven, in the context of 2 Kings 2.11, might not refer to the same spiritual heaven that Jesus spoke of, even if one assumes that Elijah did enter God's presence. Jesus' statement could still be accurate when considering the conditions under which people ascended to heaven. The absence of any response from Nicodemus, a Pharisee well-versed in the Old Testament, suggests that Jesus' statement did not contradict the Old Testament accounts. 
While this issue may seem contradictory at first, a careful examination of the text reveals various plausible interpretations that resolve the apparent contradiction. In conclusion, understanding the multifaceted uses of the term heaven in the Bible, coupled with the context and the different conditions of ascension, clarifies the potential contradiction and allows us to appreciate the spiritual depth of Jesus' words to Nicodemus. Jesus, in making this statement, wanted to emphasize the uniqueness of his divine knowledge and mission, as no one on earth had seen and experienced what he had, and thus could not teach what he taught. This passage serves as a reminder of the spiritual truths Christ shared and the importance of interpreting Scripture in its appropriate context to avoid misunderstandings.